is well documented, but one shocking case has left a family bereft and still searching for answers. Tara Costigan, a mother of three, was killed in an axe attack just a week after giving birth to her daughter. Her former partner, Marcus Rappel, pleaded guilty to the murder. Tonight, the victim's family has spoken exclusively to 7.30 about her life and her death. And a warning, this report from Madeleine Morris contains graphic descriptions of violence. <laughs> She just loved family and everybody loved her and she was sort of always, always there in the middle of everything. Oh my God, she's gonna die. Tara Costigan didn't have the easiest start in life. I had Tara from three weeks old and I looked after her on and off for long periods. Um, until she was about uh, seven and a half when her dad died. That's her dad, um, and that's me, looking much younger. Tara's father took his own life. Her mum had many children to different dads and often found it hard to cope. This chaotic home life frequently saw Tara staying with her grandparents, Margaret and Jim, and hanging out with her cousin Nathan. I had an infectious laugh um, from as a child to an adult. She, you knew something was going on if you could hear her laughing because it was pretty loud and, and pretty Tara, I guess. The loving extended family provided much needed stability, even when Tara became pregnant with her first son, Riley, at the age of 16. A second son, Drew, followed two years later. Despite her young age, Tara was a loving, dedicated mother. Her focus was her children. Her children were not going to be brought up the way she was brought up. Her children were going to have all the opportunities. Three years ago, when Tara brought over a new boyfriend, Marcus Rappel, the family welcomed him, even though they had some reservations. He was oddly quiet, but didn't scare me quiet, so he was polite. He seemed OK, but there was just something about him that just didn't gel with me. Tara was thrilled when she became pregnant again. To help with the kids, her sister Ricky Schmidt moved in. Ricky soon saw all wasn't well between Tara and Marcus. It was just off and on fights. One fight, he was cracking his knuckles and he said the, along the lines of if... You don't stop talking, that'll be the last thing you do. I could see was, you know, I've lived a long time, it was leading towards a type of verbal domestic violence. She wasn't messaging me, she wasn't ringing me, she wasn't coming to see me, um, and she was sort of cutting herself off. As Tara's pregnancy progressed, Marcus became more threatening, but she still wanted the relationship to work. She asked her uncle, Michael Costigan, to speak to Marcus. He told me that he, he had his own anger issues. He told me that in, in that conversation. And, uh, and um, he actually said to me, I know it's a problem. Um, and he even talked about you know, how he felt about women. And what did he think about women? Let's just say he doesn't, he, he didn't have a lot of respect for women. He didn't trust women. The intervention didn't work. And just weeks before she gave birth, Tara kicked Marcus out. But the verbal harassment continued. Finally, six days after their daughter Ayla was born, Tara took out a domestic violence order against Marcus. Because of previous threats that she's gotten from Marcus, she wanted to keep her kids safe and herself. She only did it because she thought was right. Instead of protecting her, it caused him to snap. Yesterday in court, a former partner revealed that Rappel, who had a history of threatening women, had vowed to kill the next woman who took out a DVO against him. True to his word, the day he received Tara's DVO, he bought an axe and drove to her house. CCTV footage shows him driving back and forth in front of her place for three quarters of an hour. Finally, after her brother leaves, Marcus Rappel makes his entrance. It was probably about, I don't know, 3, 3.40 and then I heard a smash 
of a window or something and I thought it was, might have been the boys kicking a ball and put it through the window and they would get in trouble for it. But uh, once I walked out, it wasn't until I seen the boys running towards me, screaming. I looked at the door and I noticed that and then Tara came in from her bedroom and then I seen Marcus behind her. He was just screaming. An axe in his hand, Marcus was chasing Tara, who was cradling her baby in her arms. Instinctively, Ricky Schmidt reached out to protect her sister. He tried to I grab tried her. I tried to grab her to move her close to me and to get into the laundry, um, into my bedroom. But as I put my hands on Tara, that's when he swung and hit us. Hit at like, swung and hit us both. Um, and from there, Tara fell to the ground. Marcus Rappel had sliced into the back of Tara's neck. He hit Ricky's little finger, severing a tendon. At that point, I grabbed my phone and called triple zero. I told them what was going on. Can you please explain to me how it happened? It's my, it's my sister's ex-boyfriend coming to their house with an axe. What injuries does she have? She's got an axe wound on her neck. OK, can you describe it in more detail, please? No, I don't. Ricky tried to staunch Tara's wounds to no avail. At one point, I told her that her boys were fine and that that was safe, and that she didn't she didn't have to worry about them because I'd look after them. I told them that they loved her, and that I did too. And it was a few seconds after that she mumbled something, but I couldn't work out what it was. And then it was probably. Not even a minute after that, that she took her last breath. The first day Marcus Rappel hit Tara Costigan was the day he killed her. Yesterday in Canberra, Marcus Rappel pleaded guilty to the grievous bodily harm of Ricky Schmidt. He had previously pleaded guilty to murdering Tara Costigan. He'll be sentenced in August. I hope what comes out of this is a renewed uh, commitment from, from everyone, including yourselves, the media and everyone, to be really upfront and honest and, and determined not to just accept and deal with it, but to look towards ways in which this can be changed. The greatest impact of this tragic murder will be felt by Tara Costigan's three children who will now grow up without their mother. But there is hope rising from tragedy. Her family has set up a foundation to fund social workers for domestic violence victims and convened a national family violence summit earlier this year. What we need is awareness, we need education and we need lobbying. You know, so the, the, the Tara Costigan Foundation will be very much about that. Tara's two sons are now living with their father. Her daughter, Ayla, is with Tara's aunt. Ricky Schmidt lives every day with the memory of the death of her sister, which she hopes will ultimately not have been in vain. And what do you think Tara would want her legacy to be? to stop domestic violence. She wouldn't want this for anybody. She wouldn't want it for her daughter or her kids. Madeline Morris reporting, and if that story has raised concerns for you, there is help available. You can call the National Family Violence Counselling Service on 1800 737 732.